Okay, what we're going to go over is our Barbie bungee activity, um, the math practice sheet, and we're going to look at example B. Okay, so first thing that we have here is we have some data in regards to how many hours of studying per week students put in and their average test score, which may sound somewhat familiar to many of you. So, if we look at our data, we have our number of hours studying per week, and we're going to label that as our X, and our average test score is going to be our Y. And you can see that I am starting to set up my graph. So set up your X and Y axis with your hours of studying on the X axis, and we're going to go by ones, and I want you to go up to 10. And then you're going to do your Y axis, and you're going to go up to 100. All right, and once we have our graph set up, um, let's just add our labels so we have hours studying. And on the y-axis, we have test scores. Okay, and so you can see that I've already plotted my first point. And so our first point was one hour a week. If you studied one hour a week, you, you students got an average test score of a 60. If they studied two hours a week, they got an average score of a 67. Three hours a week was a 78. Four hours a week was an average of an 82. Five hours a week was an average of an 88. And if students put in six hours a week, they had an average of a 93. So we've plotted all of our data. All right, we've made our scatter plot. And now we need to use a ruler, all right, and we want to draw a line of best fit. Now again, your line might be a little bit different than mine, it's okay, but I would like you to try to use my example to the best of your ability. So if I look at it, remember the line of best fit means that if this data was to continue, all right, and if we looked at seven hours studying per week, eight hours studying per week, all right, we should see a consistent pattern of points. And so if I were to draw a line, I want to kind of split the difference between all the points, um, and so I have kind of the same number above and below the line. And so here's my line. Again, not the best, but not the worst. Uh, but it's okay. So you see I've made my line. Um, and the next thing I need to do is I need to pick two points on the line. And remember, what I meant by two points is on the line is where our x and our y axis intersect on the line. So you can start to see I actually made an x where that happened. And that actually was one of our given points. So one of my points on the line you can see is where the x is. It's at um, 1 and 60, and then my next point, if you look down past all of the points that I plotted, you'll see that the next point where the red line goes through um, a corner where the X and the Y meet is way down here. And so the two points I want to use are 160 and 9, 110. So I'm going to move on to number 3, and so the two points I picked, I'm going to write them down. So I have 160 and 9, 110, and I've just skipped slides, um, so if I go back real quick, all right, you see the graph, and now I'm just going to move to questions um, 3 through 6, and we just can't see everything on the same page, so if you need to go back, um, use your graph, but you're not going to see the graph on the next slide, so if we move forward, I'm just rewriting my points, 160 and 9, 110, and now this is where um, things should look familiar with what you did with Mr. Gouven. So with Mr. Gouven, he had you then put those points in a table. So we have x is 1, y is 60, 9 is 110. I'm sorry, x is 9 and y is 110. All right. So new, moving down to number 4, we need to find the equation of, of a best fit line using the two points in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So finding the slope of the line. This is where we use delta y over delta x. And so remember Mr. Gouven's little wrap. Wake up in the morning, it was 60 degrees. Go to bed at night, it was 110 degrees. But basically, we're finding the difference in change. So how much did the values change from 60 to 110? That's our delta. So that's 50. And that'll be, then we want to find out how much did it change for our x, 1 to 9. And that's a difference of 8. So we want to 
divide 50 by 8, and we get 6.25, and 6.25 then becomes our slope, all right, which is m. So we're going to reference this again later um, for question number 5, but slope is 6.25. So that means um, if we looked at it, it kind of increases as an average of 6.25. So moving on to b, now we need to find the y-intercept, which means we actually have to find the value for b. So we're going to use our formula, y equals mx plus b, and we then plug in our m, so it's y equals 6.25 times x plus b. And if you remember, we then go back and we use two of our points, and we're going to use, and I have an orange highlighter, we're going to use up here, all right, our point for 1 and 60. So we plug in 60 for the y value and 1 for the x, so our new equation Looks like 60 equals 6.25 times 1 plus b. And now we need to solve for b. So it's actually pretty easy. 6.25 times 1 is 6.25 plus b. Then we subtract 6.25 from both sides. And we'll end up at the end with 53.75, which is our p value. So now we have our m, which is our slope intercept. And we have our y-intercept, which is 53.75. And the y-intercept means if we actually go back and look at the graph really quick, all right, the y-intercept, that's where our line we drew, that's where it goes across the y-axis. So again, I have my orange, 53.75. There it is, all right, approximately. So it all lines up. So I'm going to bring this back up. Sorry, here's everything that we had. We have M and we have our B. And now we need to write the equation for our line of best fit, which we just plug in our M and our B. And so our equation will be Y equals 6.25X plus 53.75. Okay, um, I'm just going to quickly, I took a picture of questions 5 and 6, but number 6 got cut off. So we have question five. I need you to explain the meaning of the slope of the line. And so that goes back to that value for m. So that's 6.25. So what we mean by that is the line represents hours of studying. And so for every hour a student studies, that per week, all right, that means that the average test score all right, should increase or should improve a little over six points. All right, so if you look at all the averages, for if you add another hour of studying a week, your grade should improve by six points. So some of you might want to learn that. But moving on, last question, and this will help you when we um, predict how many rubber bands you're going to need for your Barbie bungee. Um, so looking at question six, it says how many hours would a student have to study to earn an average test score of a 98? So the average test score, remember, go back to your first table. All right, and I'll skip back real quick to my first table. That's our y. And so if I skip back ahead, oops, I just gave us the answer, but I'm sorry about that. So if I skip back ahead, we're now going to plug that in. So that's our y. So the 98 is our y, and we plug it into our equation, 6.25 times x plus 53.75. So now we just need to solve for x. Subtract 53.75 on both sides, and you end up with 44.25 and 6.25x. So now we need to eliminate the 6.25, get x by itself, so divide 6.25 on both sides. And so 44.25 equals 7.08. All right, so x is 7.0. So that means in order to earn an average test score of a 98, that student should put in a little over seven hours a week to study. So again, hopefully that's helpful advice as you move forward. Um, and hopefully, following the video, you've been able to complete example B, and now using what you did in class today, for example A, and what we just did in example B, I want you to go on and try example C. You do not have to do example D, and that's for both classes.